Jesus, thank you for watching over us all this week. We wish to ask you to come into our hearts today and let us hear this message so that um, we can be better examples to those around us and showing those who, showing others that he that lives in us is guiding us to our life and our salvation. In this we pray. Amen. 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 Cheryl just gave me some power. Yeah, that's Everyone ready to sing right this morning? Let's go. All right. Go. Get on your feet and let's give all the glory to Woo woo. What? Woo woo. <laughs> Believe in the sun. I believe in the risen one. I believe I overcome by the power of His blood. Amen.
So breathe, O oh breath of God, now breathe, O oh breath of God, breathe, O oh breath of God, now breathe. Oh yeah. So breathe, O oh breath of God, now breathe, O oh breath of God, breathe, O oh breath of God, now breathe.
Sometimes we forget because amidst the storms and the trials and tribulations, the illnesses, right? You know what I mean? I'm over writing a sermon last night about, you know, giving thanks and I got a little sick baby girl and then the week before my, my little boy was sick. You know what I mean? And you're just like, man, I'm thankful that they're not sick or right. I'm thankful that they do it. But you, 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 you start to realize that like, hey, it could be worse. Amen. But praise be to God that He's, he's, he should be first in our lives, and that's yes. why we can always that's right. give thanks. Yes. So as we get ready to give thanks to him today, you guys will go, uh, close your eyes and open up in prayer, because I just got some uh, <laughs> some uh, messages on Facebook, actually. We like doing that. And uh, we want, I want to lift up my brother, Anthony. I guess he got COVID right now, and it's, uh, he's not doing too good. He's, he's really under the weather at the moment. And then uh, one of our brothers is going to be here, but his little baby boy is still not feeling good. Little Rocky Lee's still not doing too good. So we're going to lift them up and anyone else who may not have been able to join us today. And then we're going to also pray for the message. Lord Jesus, Father God in heaven, Lord, we want to lift up anyone who can't be here right now, Lord. Lord, you, we intercede on their behalf because we get to, Lord, because you're already interceding on their behalf next to the Father, Lord. Lord, we are so grateful to you and so thankful to you, Lord. Lord, use this time to be glorified. May your name be lifted up, Lord. We pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Give me thanks. You know, I, 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 got, I was thinking of uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 when I was uh, getting ready for a message. And I'm like, oh, what's a good Thanksgiving verse, right? I ended up planning on a couple other verses, but this is where I, 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 I got my title for a message. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, it says, Always be joyful, never stop praying, be thankful in what? All circumstances. Come on, you get to do better than that. In all circumstances. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Amen. You know, all circumstances. Right now, the kids are learning this verse in children's church right now. Nice. But circumstances... 
seem to be easier and harder to bury, right? You know, like if there's some circumstances, it's real easy to be thankful. Right? Like when you're getting ready to get married and, and, and the girl decided to walk down the aisle and not hightail it out of town, you're thankful. Like, oh, man. But then when you first mess up and don't wash the dish, you know, or leave the dishes in the sink, you're not as thankful because you're like, oh, I'm not actually mad. But yet you're, you're, you, you get past that because you are thankful because of the love. Yes. The love you have and the love we have with Christ is why we're thankful in all things. In all circumstances. Everything, when, when, when we're broke, we're thankful. When we're rich, we're thankful. When it, it doesn't matter what it is, what season it is, we're thankful, not because of who we are, but because of who he is in us. You know, I wanted to um, come in and I, and I wanted to just read all kinds of different verses, but I was like, you know what, it's a little bit, I don't want to be too scattered. But before we do that, how do you give thanks? And I, I just thought it was one of the traditions we do at uh, Thanksgiving. Like, uh, there's just a couple of answers. How do you give thanks? Or what are you thankful for? Anybody? Nobody ever shy of it? What? Mom. I give thanks. Mom. <laughs> I give thanks every morning and every night for all my family and for every, and just be having a roof over our head. Nice. Jamie. I give thanks for the breath I take every morning. Oh, amen. amen. Yes. I saw there was a couple other hands. Olive, what are you thankful for over there? Oh, Lola. I just want to thank God because I've been praying for my son. He's 28 years old for a long time. He struggled with drugs. And he was on his way to the <coughs> crossroads where they're, they're, they were going to have him go to prison again. And he's only 28 years old. God gave me a chance to speak up and uh, let the judge know my son needs help. And he needs to be in a program, not just sent back to prison. Mm. But anyway, long story short, yesterday God made a way that he can go into this program to get sober. Amen. And uh, I believe God is opening doors for my son and, and yes. uh, for a mental health program too for him. Wow. So God is just opening some doors. He told me to just love on him and I'm gonna do the rest. And he's already opening doors for my son to just know that even though he didn't have a strong father figure, he's got his heavenly father that will help him and teach him how to be a real man. Amen, man. Thank you for sharing. Boy, uh, thank you for sharing that with us. I mean, that's a lot to be thankful for. You know, and, and when you hear someone else get up and share what they're thankful for, I hope that uh, puts something in your heart where you're like, you know what, I'm thankful too. Maybe maybe it's because your son didn't start doing drugs. Or maybe he did have a strong father figure. Right? Because that's why God uses our testimonies to encourage each other to know what we are to be thankful for. Because if I, if I, if I'm true, there's a lot of things that, man, you know, I hear what other people are thankful for, and then what, what happens? I, 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 I get bitter. It's hard. Right? I did, there's this uh, rapper, I like guess, uh, Andy Minio, but I'll quote him really quick. He says, don't let your food get cold while looking at someone else's plate. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but I've been guilty of that numerous amount of times, church. I'm being honest with you. I, 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 I sat there and looked at what the other person had and forgot how good I have it right in my head. You know what I mean? So, 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 so we want to remember what, who we are and not be worried about what everyone else has, but be thankful for what we do have. And what we have is plenty. Even if it sometimes seems like not enough, right? we, what we have is what God has given us, so that's all we need. And, and, and so I wanted to uh, start the sermon by reading a couple passages from 2 Corinthians 9 6. And then, if you guys give me a little context, a little background story of what's going on, Paul is writing to his brethren saying, Guys, like, if you guys saw what this church is doing, like, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it because they're just they're so generous. And they're so generous with what they're doing. And, 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 and we're going to start in uh, verse 6, chapter 9. 
of 2 Corinthians. So if you guys have your Bibles or if you want to use them in the views, go ahead and open it. But if not, uh, I will have it behind us. But it starts off like this in verse 6. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scripture said, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. Amen. He said, no, 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 no. Guys, what they're doing, it's got to be a God thing. Right? It's got to be like, I, I, I always thought I was a pretty generous guy, you know, like somewhat, you know, before I came to the Lord. But, you know, looking back, I wasn't. <clears throat> Why? Because I only gave to get. Only, only, I was a quick pro pro, uh, pro pro, right? I wanted to, uh, well, I wanted to give you some because I wanted to get some. That, that was the idea. And, and, and say, no, when, when, when it's for, for God, you don't give nothing to get something. You will get something because he says you'll get more than enough. You actually have more than what you needed because you have more than, to share. Yes. But we don't do it for that. We do it just because we get to yes. give. Yeah. So we, when we get to give, we give thanks. And we keep giving thanks. In Psalm 106, boy, I know it's small right here, but I'm just going to read it for you guys. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Amen. God loves us. And, and, and his love endures. But the thing is, is we, we start to get weak, right? We get, we get, we get tired. We like I, I don't know what you guys but sometimes I just like I'm just looking up at the heavens. I'm like, Lord, I like, give me a break, bro. Help me out. Like, why, why I'm doing everything you told me to do, and I'm tired. But then you know what? That's why we we, we say prayers. Is we, we we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength because He strengthens us to get through and to endure. Yes. For we are overcomers. We are perseverers. We keep going, yes. and we keep going because we keep giving. And, and I, I love it because when we say remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but one who plants generously will get a generous crop. And I, I was saying it's kind of another way of like, interpreting it would be probably better written this way. Like, the one who sows sparingly, sparingly will he also reap. And the one who sows with or because of blessings will, with because of blessings will also reap. So it's saying like the blessings God has given you, if you, if you only give a little bit back, then you're only going to get a little bit. Like, you, you, you just trust in him that like, if God has given you plenty, then you're going to give out plenty. And that goes for all things across the board. I, I, I was even talking about Pastor Mike about my message, but, but this is what he was saying right here. He's, it could be your time. It, 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 could, it could be what you, it, you know, some people have money. Some people could give money back. But some people, all they got is some time and effort. Some elbow grease. Maybe, that, maybe it's just some prayer. You know what I mean? But like you just give it all because you've been blessed with it. If God has blessed you with some food, then you, then you give the food. You know, it's, it's, it's the idea of loving your neighbor as you love yourself. So when you love your neighbor as you love yourself, you're not going to let yourself go without what you need. That, that, that's what's going on. If, if you need it, you're going to get it, right? Or you're going to do everything you can to get it. So that means if your neighbor needs it, you're going to see him and you're going to say, I don't want him to go without it. So you're going to give him what you have because God already gave it to you. And in verse 7 it says, you must each decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. He's reminding him, like, you don't have to give. But you should. Because when you do, 
You're going to find out it's greater to give than to receive. And that we can't outgive God. And we want to follow this example, right? Aren't we glad that God, he didn't have to give everything to us, but yet he did. He gave us his son's life on the cross. He gave his life for us. So why would we be stingy with anything? Why would we hold tightly to what is not ours in the first place? In Deuteronomy 15, 7, it says, But if there are any poor Israelites in your towns, when you arrive in the land the Lord your God is giving you, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward them. Instead, be generous and lend them whatever they need. Do not be mean-spirited and refuse someone a loan because the year for canceling debts is close at hand. If you refuse to make the loan and the needy person cries out to the Lord, you will be considered guilty of sin. Give generously to the poor, not grudgingly, for the Lord your God will bless you in everything you do. Amen? Amen. Amen. You, don't, you, don't, you don't do it begrudgingly because the Lord, he didn't do it begrudgingly. He wasn't like, oh, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to forgive Mike again. You think he does, though, right? Like, like, you're, like, like you're like, oh, I messed up again. And like, I, I know the Lord. He's not going to give me more grace. But it says, yeah, actually, the opposite. It says, every morning his mercies are born afresh. Yes. Because great are his mercies. He, he loves to lavish us with grace. Yeah. He just says, I'll give you more, and I'll give you more. And, and, and so since he gives us this grace, guess what we should give each other? Grace. Since he gives us forgiveness, we should give each other forgiveness. Yes. I mean, because it's, it's one of those things. Yes, it helps to give to the church because, I mean, it's, it's expensive to have lights on, right? <laughs> but, it, but, it, but it even pays more to give to those because your heart wants you to give. Right. Yeah. Yes. Because your heart's in it. It's not because, oh, I have to. Pastor Mike said, I got still. He was all fired up, and I want to. No, no, no. It's more, I, I want to give because I'm a part of it. I'm a part of this church. I'm a part of the kingdom. I want the kingdom to be blessed. So I'm going to give, and I'm going to give thanks. Yes. That's why the Lord loves a cheerful giver. That's why we give back. Because we've been given so much. Amen. If you, if you could look into your heart and say, oh, man, you know what? I've been giving a lot, but you I think I'm just going to hold on to it. Then, you know, like, that's, that's not the right her motive, right? That's, that's, the, that's the wrong way to do it. But if you're just like, oh, wow, God has given me so much, I should give it to someone else. You know what's even crazier in God's economy? Somehow he just gives it back to you and he even gives more. I, I, I don't understand it, but you know what? It's not for me to understand his ways and his thoughts are higher than mine. But I know since we, I started practicing in my life, all of a sudden, the more I gave, the more I got. Because I can't out give God because he just keeps giving and giving. And so I keep giving thanks every day, every morning, every afternoon, every chance I get. Because the God we serve is generous. In, in verse 8 of chapter 9 of 1 Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians, it says, And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Amen. This is one of my favorite verses. You know what's crazy? I, 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 I can't even remember this verse, but then all of a sudden I think it was uh, Noe's uh, praying this verse. And then all of a sudden Pastor Mike came and prayed this verse. And then Brian prayed this verse. So I was like, I can look up that verse. You know? I think I told uh, Jack, I was like, what's that verse? Is it Micah? He's all Malachi, Mike. Come on, get it together. But in Malachi 3.10, it says... Bring all the tithes into the storehouse so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. Oh, man, what, 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 a, what, a, what a statement. God is saying, if you don't believe me, let me prove it to you. Right? I mean, maybe, maybe you're just like, Mike, yeah, you have some cool slides stuff, but I don't believe it. Hey, you got to believe me. God's saying believe him and put him to the test. See, 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 see what, what you get for giving. See what happens when you let him enter into your heart and enter into your life. Because I tell you what, you thought you were living, but you don't know what living is until you live with what Christ Jesus in your heart. Amen? Amen. 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 
And the uh, first nine, it goes, as the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. Right? He's quoting out of a Psalm and 112. Right? I mean, and, and, and I'm going to read this, you know, not to get too, too caught up in scripture. You know, man, I just love scripture, my child's scripture. But, it, but it, I just love this Psalm 112. It says, Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their houses, and their righteousness endures forever. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, for those who are gracious and compassionate and righteous. Good will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast. Trusting in the Lord, their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. In the end, they will look and triumph on their foes. That's right. They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn will be lifted high in honor. The wicked will see and be vexed. They will gnash their teeth and waste away. The longings of their wicked will come to nothing. Praise be to God's word. Amen, right? Like that's just, I don't know, those, those songs don't get you like this excited. I mean, maybe I'm not reading it with enough of them. Because I mean, that, like, it, it's not about how I read it, but it's about what it says into your heart. Yes. I mean, when I hear things that it will endure, you will be lifted up. You, you, you will, uh, for some of us, that just means you will survive. You know, I'm not thinking, oh, is it a reason? I will survive. But, but you know, like, I, but you, you know what I'm talking about is you may not real survive. Like, Mike, you're telling me to give, but man, I ain't got no, I ain't got no more to give. Man, I, I'm tired. I, I, I'm sick. I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, right? Like, you know, just like, man, it's like, and now you're telling me to go ahead and just, just give, give back. And I'm saying yes, yeah. emphatically yes. Why? Because God gave it all to you, so we just give it back. It's not ours anyway. It was just given to us to be stored up. Right. But a good store doesn't hold on to the master's wealth. It doesn't hold on to what is not his. Right? right? Uh, Jesus says, render to Caesar what is Caesar's. You know, on our, our money, it says, trust in God. Mm-hmm. Right? But, you know, we're trusting in that thing that is written on. We should be trusting God. Yes. First and foremost. And be giving him thanks. You're not being thankful for things that are just, they're fleeting. They'll be gone before you know it. Mm-hmm. So we got to examine our hearts to see, what am I putting my, all my trust in? Who am I giving thanks to? Yeah. Yes. And in verse 10 it says, For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and, the, and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. He, he'll do it. Like that, that's another way to say you can't outgive God. He's the one, like you're like, oh well, here uh, it's my last 10. Yeah, you know, I really wanted that uh, value you know. You know what I mean? Like, uh, that's $10 now. I've been wanting that value maybe $4. You know what I mean? I'm thinking, you know, I don't smoke cigarettes, but I saw a sign the other day that said $9 for a pack of cigarettes. I'm glad that we don't smoke on these premises anymore. Y'all need to save some money. You know what I mean? That's crazy. But, but I mean, like you, you look at what you got and you're just like, I don't got a lot. So I, I, you hold on to it. You cling to it. But it's because you're looking in the wrong spot. Because if you look into your heart and you got Jesus in your heart, you got it all. Yeah. You got everything. You don't need no more. And Hosea 10, 12, it says, Sow to yourself righteousness, reap mercy, Break up your fallow, your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord until He comes and rains righteousness upon you. You ever stand out in the rain? Yes. yes. What happens? You get soaked. Yep. That's the idea. And let, let the Lord soak you yes. with blessing. Yes. I want you to step out there and just, just embrace it. Instead of uh, looking at like, you know, it's funny because I, I was thinking to myself, we pay all this money to try to figure out a way to water our lawns efficient. 
<laughs> right? Like I, just, I just renovated our yard, right? And, and we're trying to figure out the best way to conserve water, but to use enough water to water our grass. We want it to be green and nice. And yet, God, all he has to do in one instant, have a rainstorm, and you're just like, man, that, that watered my grass better than I could ever do. Yeah. Right? And here we are doing the same thing with our bank accounts. Oh, you know, this nickel and dime and nickel and dime. And God said, I want to throw dollars at you while you're holding on to those, ten, those dimes, those quarters. And the reason why he wants to do that is not for you to go and <laughs> live lavish, but for you to lavishly love on those so you can live. Um... Verse 9 11 says, Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be what? Generous. Generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank who? God. Yeah. Because they know who it came from. Yes. Yeah. It didn't come from you. And that's the idea. If you think it's all coming from you, I mean, that, 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 that's cool. Maybe, 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 maybe you feel strongly that it is. But you know what? God had his hand in it because he created you. Yes. Right? Like, I mean, even those who don't think that God had anything to do with it, like, you know, if he, if he created you, then, yeah, he did. Because you are who you are because God made you to be that person. So we keep giving thanks. But like I said, sometimes we don't have a bunch of money to give. But in Romans, I love it, it gives you a little bit of a little bit of encouragement, right? In Romans 12, 8, it says, If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility, ser responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. He said, whatever the gift is, church, give it back. Yes, yes. Maybe God has gifted you in a different way. Maybe it's financially, maybe it's educationally, maybe it's spiritually, maybe it's prayerfully, maybe it, whatever that gift may be, he said it could be used to glorify the kingdom of heaven. Yes. Yes. It could be used to give. And so we constantly keep giving thanks. In 1 Chronicles 29, 11, it says, Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Everything in the heavens and on earth is yours, O Lord, and this is your kingdom. We adore you as the one who is over all things. Wealth and honor come from you alone, for you rule over everything. Power and might are, your, are in your hand. And at your discretion, people are made great and given strength. Oh, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who are my people that we could give anything to you? Everything we have has come from you, and we give you only what you first what? Yes. yes. That's why we do it, because he gave it to us first. That's why we love, because he loved us first. Yes. And we want to talk about Christ Jesus died for you on the cross because he loved you. Yes. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. This is in Philippians 4, 19. He's saying he'll supply everything you need. Yes. Don't be full thinking you need more. Because actually it's probably more if you want more. I'm learning that in my life. I want a lot of things. If I, I don't always get what I want, but God always gives me what I need. Amen? Amen. Yes. I don't know who said this, but I thought this was a pretty cool little nugget of a uh, quote. It says, the work of the Lord is not something we do for the Lord. It is something the Lord does through us for others, and he does it as we give ourselves to him. Amen? Amen. 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 The blessing of the Lord makes a person rich. And he adds no sorrow. Yes. You know, it's one of those things. For the longest time, I didn't know I was poor. <laughs> I say that, right? But my mom never let me know that I was poor. Yeah. I mean, in a sense, we were. We were better off than a lot of other people. But we, we didn't have a ton of stuff. We'll put it that way. Yeah. Why? Because I always thought I was rich because I had love. Huh. I think you, a lot of you guys can testify to that. Amen? Yeah. A lot of you guys can say, hey, Mike, you know what? Like, my, my bank account's never been full, but my heart has always been full yes. with love yes. of my family and friends. Yes. And that's what we get to be thankful for. Hey, you know what? 
for a lot of us here that we can't provide that new car or that new thing that the, when you graduate, you know, all you get is a good job and a pat on the back. But you, they, I would, would love that you got that good job and a pat on the back, right? You know, I tell my nephews, I'm buying a new vehicle, we go for a ride. You know, after you graduate, you know, I keep giving thanks. You know, I, mean, I let them know that I love you, but you know, I don't love you enough to buy your car. But I ain't got that kind of love. Right? But, 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 it, but it's amazing because God wants us to know who He is, yes. and who He is is a generous God. Yes. He's a loving God. He's an awesome God. In Ephesians two. And we're going to read all the way tonight. It says, But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. So that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Amen? Amen. I'm going to play a song for you guys, because it's a little bit of a, I, I, I wanted the worship team to sing it, but they're like, you can't tell us this on Saturday, Mike, come on. You know? <laughs> so, I'll play it, how about that? You know? <laughs> you know, so I'm going to play this song for you guys, and I hope you guys meditate on it, sing it, do whatever you feel, but this is a beautiful worship song.
So many times I forget. And not, not because I want to or not because I'm getting older. I know some of y'all are probably like, oh, oh Mike, you're just getting old. That's why you're forgetting. <laughs> but it's just because there's a lot going on. Yeah. Life's tough. Yeah. And you know, sometimes I feel poor and sometimes I feel weak. And you gotta remind us, you know, because of Him, we're strong. We are rich. Yes. And thanks be to God that. When we fall, he lifts us up. Yes. When we fail, he forgives. When we are weak, he is strong. When we are lost, he is the way. When we are afraid, he is our courage. When we stumble, he steadies us. When we hurt, he heals us. When we are broken, he mends us. When we are blind, he leads us. When we are hungry, he feeds us. And when we face trials, he is with us. And when we face persecution, he will shield us. And when we face problems, he will comfort us. And when we face loss, he will provide for us. And when we face death, he will carry each and every one of us who is his home. Because he is everything, he is everybody, he is everywhere. He is God, he is faithful, and we are his, and he is ours. Amen. As you guys feel stand up. Did Pastor Michael take us in the presence of the ultimate giver? Yeah. 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 We're going to do business with God. We're going to talk to this giver. Everybody here, including myself, has something on our heart that is weighing us down that we need uh, God's help with. Yes. And so we're going to invite you in a minute to come forward and speak that out because there's power in the spoken word. Uh, before then, or after that, then you can come walk down the hall. We have some, uh, uh, Brian and some others will be in the hall to direct you down to the uh, gym for our uh, uh, Stone Soup Sunday. Um, and let me just thank God for that food. And then we'll invite some people up to pray. Um, uh, with you. Uh, Pastor Mike, would you come forward, please? Are you people? Pastor Michael. Robert, can you take a minute to come up for you people? Lord, you have given us everything. We remember what Paul said. What do you have that you did not receive? Everything. Everything. Every breath. Every, every molecule in our body. In you we live and move and have our being. If we want any more evidence beyond the abundance we have now, starting with Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross and resurrection, if we want any more evidence down the hall, is this meal that you have prepared for us. We thank you for it. Bless that to our bodies. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Now this is your time.